The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. The Branded Athlete, featuring in-depth interviews with and commentary on today's biggest and most successful athletes. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, The Branded Athlete. In the house. Here comes your song. Hey. Hey. Trina in the background, hey. F boy. Oh. Judge, judge her, judge her. <laughs> we get live over here. She, I ain't picking, but it's live. This is song. It is. And uh, it sounds like they sampling uh, that N- the NWO, yes, the NWA, yes, right? Yes. 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 She came with it on this one. She came with it. Playing Trina at the request of our special guest, our fabulous, fast, literally fast guest, Miss Carmelita Jetter. Yes, thank Jetter. you. Woo! Thank you for having not me. Jetter. Can we clear this up? It is not Jeter. It's it not is Jeter. Jetter. Jetter. I think they confused me with Derek. Oh, yeah, that's and right. Yeah. Everybody yeah. says Jeter because of Derek. I know one time I was in the airport and they had Jetter for, and I was in New York, and I, people thought that they were waiting for Derek. And so when I came out, they were like, oh. oh no, no. I was like, oh, you, you should flash that gold man. medal on them, though. <laughs> flash that gold medal one time. <laughs> Derek ain't got one of these. <laughs> Derek ain't got no gold medal, though. That's right. Guys, you guys are watching The Branded Athlete on Black Hollywood Live every Thursday night at 7 o'clock. I'm Eric Renee Davis. You can find me on Snapchat, Periscope, Twitter, all that stuff at Eric Renee D. What is up? You know what it is, man. It's Andre Dean. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Andre the Giant. A U N D R E T H A G I A N T. Hey everyone, I'm Raina. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope because I need more followers on Periscope. <laughs> Tell them. Raina Always. underscore Ale. What's up, everybody out there? It's your boy Joshua Johnson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at JJ the Talented. And I got to hold it down one time for the Toros out there. Uh, ah, Toro Nation, what up? Go ahead. And as always, you guys can follow all things Black Hollywood Live at blackhollywoodlive.com. Follow us on Instagram at The Branded Athlete and follow BHL online on Twitter. Now, for the guest of honor, the only oh, yes. woman yes. who matters clap. tonight. Can we get a clap? clap. <laughs> clap. Round of applause. Clap. Round of applause. Give, give us that round of applause in there, baby. <laughs> I don't hear it. Oh, we, we had that uh, last time. But tonight we have Olympic gold, silver, and bronze medalist, the fastest know. woman in the world, my former track coach of Bishop Montgomery High School. Hey, go Knights. Hey, Knights. And we have the beautiful Carmelita Jetter here with us. There, there you it go. is. Thank, there you. There you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Should have been here. Coach CJ. Yes. <laughs> thank Aww. you for thank you for coming here tonight. We're so excited to have you. Um, so I know right now you're training for the 2016 Olympics in Rio de Janeiro. Yes. Did I say it right? Uh, Brazil. Mm-hmm. Um, so how's training going so far for you? Training's going amazing. Um, everything's just lining up really well. Um, I have been injured for the past two years. I pulled my right quad, then I pulled my left quad. So my quads just don't want to act right right now. But now. Everything is going really good with my body. My training is going well. My weight is where it needs to be. Um, And, you know, with track and field, sometimes you hit peaks and then you drop a little bit, then you come back up. So right now I definitely feel like I'm back where I need to be. And, you know, two bad years definitely mentally get you back focused, get you more humble, get you ready to do what you know you need to do. 2016 will be my last Olympics, but mm. it will not be my last competition year. 2017 will be my last competition year. Then I will retire after 2017. So I'm really excited about going into Rio, going into the trials in Eugene. And my, my whole purpose of this year is, like I used to tell you guys back in the day, leaving on the track. Yes. Um, every day I go to practice, I'm leaving it out there. I don't want to take anything else home with me. I want to leave it out there and start back up again the next day. So that's what my mindset is. It's back to the old Carmelita where you just left everything on the track. You threw up, you laid there for 30 Mm -hmm. minutes, you know, you worked hard and sometimes you get away from that a little bit when you have a little success. You get away from the hard work. You get away from the falling out. And I had to get back to that so I can get to where I need to be. So right now is everything is follow Jet to Rio and mentally 
do what I need to do. So when I walk away from this sport, I have no regrets. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's, awesome. That's yeah. all you can ask for as an athlete. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Now, looking a little bit past Rio, mm -hmm. talk about retirement. Yes. What is your next step after Rio? Well, after you finish your competition well, here in 2017. Well, after 2017, I don't want to do anything for six months. <laughs> I don't He's because, relaxed. you know, sure. I've been professional athlete since 2007. <laughs> I ran in high school. I ran in college. So it's like I'm leaving one career to go to another career. And I don't want to leave and just jump directly into the new career. I want to rest a little bit. Travel. I travel all the time, but I never see the places that I travel. Mm. So I actually want to travel now and just have six months to I don't have a schedule. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be yeah. somewhere at a certain time doing something at a certain time, certain day. You know, I want to just jump up and say, you know what, I don't want to do anything today. You know, that's how I wanted to be for a little while. And then I, I definitely want to commentate. I don't know if you've seen the um, commercial with me and Pat Harvey for Channel 9 about breast cancer and being mm -hmm. an ambassador. So she's been mentoring me to, to get me to where I need to be when I do stop, you know, running. And I would love to be an anchor or a news anchor or a sports anchor or, or even commentating on the sidelines. So that is something that I would love to do. And as Raina told you, I coached her at Bishop Montgomery from 2004 to 2008 were the years that I was there and I loved coaching so I'm not going to rule that one out you know I love helping someone else get better be better and and th that's just something that I want to do regardless mm -hmm. if I don't commentate I'm gonna coach and even if I'm commentating I might do a little side coaching on the side because that's just something that I love to do so I have a plan you know sometimes athletes don't have a plan they just leave their sport and they're looking around like okay so what do I do now? Right. So I, I definitely have a plan, and um, I'll I'll get that going when I retire. So when you say commentate, do you really want to stick towards some track and field, or are you really trying to open it up and do I wanna, basketball? I want to open it up. May come your way. I want to open it up. Like I said, I grew up in a basketball household. My younger brother, Pooh Jetter, he plays play, overseas. Plays correct? overseas, mm -hmm. but he played with the Sacramento Kings, and that's we grew up playing basketball. Our house was the only house with a court. And my dad drew a free throw line, three point right. line. So everybody was at our house on Saturdays. You know, mm -hmm. you drank out the, the water hose mm -hmm. and you yeah, ran in the yeah. house, grabbed the sandwich, ran back outside. You know, uh -huh. we did three on threes, two on two. So I grew up in that lane. So I'm just athletic. Mm -hmm. I don't have to stick with track and field. I was the only girl playing football. You know, I was racing people from street back. light to street light. <laughs> you know, I you give me the ball, I'm gonna run it. Mm -hmm. So I can I feel like since I know sport and I know how hard it is to be an athlete, I feel like I'll be able to do any sport because I enjoy sports. I enjoy athletics. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to. I don't want to stick to weather and stick to just track and field. You know, I definitely want to branch out. So when you were saying um, you, you were running, you speaking of your siblings and all that good stuff, I got a question for uh -huh. you. So when you was a child, mm -hmm. did you just run when you was getting whoopings? <laughs> I did. did. <laughs> and couldn't nobody catch you, huh? They couldn't do nothing but just sit this there and This one instance, my dad was chasing me through the house. I was gone. <laughs> and I cut through the side and ran in the bathroom and locked the door. And it was out. And he just waited for me to come out. There you go. I, I eventually had to come out. Did but you get yeah. it worse then? Yeah. You know, I, at one point, I think he was just tired of waiting for me. So he let me go to sleep, and then he got me the next oh, day. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Nobody <laughs> wake you up with a whooping. Right you thought, oh, that's the worst. You thought it was over, that's right? Wake you up with a whooping. Well, back, back to the subject of coaching, because I can use a little coaching myself. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to um, the... The abs. I've seen the abs popping. Yeah. I've seen them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I've seen it on TV. How do you do that? Is that is that all cardio? Is it is it your diet? Is it both? What is it? I want to say it's all of the above. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just say it's it's one thing because I do do abs in the in the weight room, but then I'm also running a lot, and then I'm eating all organic now. See, mm -hmm. I wasn't eating all organic all the time, but now I'm doing all organic. So I want to say it's a combination of just eating well, drinking a lot of water, training. Excuse me, training really good. How okay. much water do you drink a day? Almost a gallon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So you can't get away with eating like just whatever you want, even though you run every day. You, you know what? I can't. Um, as far as the water, mm -hmm. I drink a gallon because of aqua hydrate. Mm -hmm. You know, they definitely show me tons of love. And as far as the food, I could get away with it back in the day. But I'm getting uh, a little older I feel like now. You can still get away no, with it. no, 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 I can't, I can't. You listen to her. I can't, I can't. No, for all y'all female, you better listen to her. And 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 now <laughs> I notice how my body's changing a little bit. You know, I am 36 years old. Um, 
and I just turned 36 in November. So I noticed that I, I can't just eat all the sweets that I would normally eat mm -hmm. all the time. It just doesn't run off like it used to. So I went with Nutrafit, and okay. Nutrafit does breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, and desserts for me every oh, day. Nice. Oh, okay. And mm -hmm. organic, and it's saved my life. I'm 133 right now, 133. I teeter-tot 133, 135. You know, I what do you want to be that. at Rhea? What weight do you, do you like to be? Competing, I want to be 130. But when you're oh. training, you never want to train at your race weight. Mm -hmm. You know, you oh. always want to be a couple That's pounds heavier because you don't want to get hurt. You know, if you're training at your race weight, when you go to race, you're going to drop some more. Mm -hmm. So then I'll be 127 racing, and that's like, I don't think that would be a good idea. <laughs> so um, I saw that you worked with Blake Griffin, mm -hmm. and he was interested in getting, I guess, working on his speed, and you were the person that he contacted. How was that? You know what? That was really fun. <laughs> um, I always heard stories about Blake. We actually have the same doctor, Dr. Frederick Bradley. And he's always told me funny stories about Blake or how much of a nice guy Blake is. But I actually got a chance to meet him myself. And everything that was ever said about Blake is totally true. Mm -hmm. um, very nice, very easygoing, very humble guy. And uh, the whole show, we just played around. We just played and joked and just had a good time. It was good energy. I enjoyed working with him. It was for Red Bull. And it was um, a storyline of, you know, trying to get him faster. He was picking up different sports for the first for 10 weeks. And he picked a different sport every week. And he picked track and field. So I showed him how to dry face, pick his knees up. It was a lot of fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. And it just went back to me coaching again. Mm -hmm. yeah. The energy, you know, of helping yeah. somebody else to do something that you do. Well, did you make him fast enough to get out of the second round is what <laughs> I want to know. You, you, did, did, you don't have to answer that. Oh, it's been a struck. This, this is a panel oh, full of clipper haters. I, I, I love the clipper, the clipper right Thank right here. you, Carmen. So I, I can't be I, a clipper hater for you. Do you, you love the Lakers? To escape the, the Western you know, Conference. I love pieces of the Lakers. Okay. I will say that. Okay. Um, I will always love Kobe Bryant. There you go. I will always <laughs> love the Laker <laughs> legacy. Okay. I don't know how I feel about the direction that the Lakers are going in. Okay. That's what I will say. Thank you. Will you stop? Yeah. Look, but we I, got but a whole future ahead of what us. What do you mean? You mean as far as the players that they're recruiting and that 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 they're drafting, or you mean as a, as a coaching staff, as a as a management position? What, what um, I probably say all of the above. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. You know, when you when you sat down to watch the Lakers, you sat down for entertainment. You sat down for a good game. You sat down because of Kobe. You know, okay. half the times that's why people are sitting down now because of Kobe. Mm -hmm. And you sat down for all these things, and they could they could play a horrible team, but you didn't care because you're watching the Lakers. Yes. And I just mm -hmm. feel like they don't have that attraction anymore like they used to, mm -hmm. to where you would sit down and watch the game like, oh, yeah, my boy's about to do it tonight. It's just w they have to get back to that, to where I want to sit down and just watch a full game of the Lakers. We They'll can, get it. They'll get also, back. we can segue I into mean, Raina's topic. We're talking about NBA. Yeah. Absolutely. About, like, do you think that after Kobe retires, if he ever, if he ever leaves the Lakers, <laughs> which we guess he's going to really do this time finally, do you think that the Lakers need another superstar? Like, do they need to go after some right now right now who's gonna be a superstar well I think they have a couple of the right pieces mm -hmm. to the puzzle on the team now um, they're just gonna have to do a little revamping of the team um, and it, it can't be all circled around one person mm -hmm. right you know I think that they're gonna have to put a couple more pieces of that puzzle in there and I feel like They've always depended on Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant. True. But you can't depend on one person to make a team great. There, there has to be other pieces mm -hmm. to that. And the only other piece that they really have on the team from the old Lakers is... Um, Meta World Peace. It's Meta World Peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, it's, it just needs to be m more synergy, mm -hmm. I think. I got a question. Um, as an athlete, um, it's interesting because you're, it's more of an individual sport, mm -hmm. you know, at running track. Um, my thing is, this is a question to you, too, as well. Okay. I never see Kobe Bryant, when he's not playing, he's not on the sideline. I've noticed that. I've actually been to a game and noticed that he's not on the sideline. And from my, well, before I give my mm -hmm. perspective, I would like to know, you know, being an individual 
not an individual, but playing an individual sport. What do you think about that? What's your What's your insight on that? Well, I've played team sports before, mm-hmm. and I've and I've and, and I'm in an individual sport now. What I will say is easier to sit on the outside looking in and say, I don't see this person here during this time when you don't know exactly what went on on the back end. Mm-hmm. Like right. maybe the okay. coach said, you know what, Kobe, I need you to stay home and do this. I need I need to work with these okay. guys. I need them not to depend on you. I need mm-hmm. them not to look at you for guidance. I need them to try to figure this out their self. Like we don't know, don't know. what's being said before – the people come out to the to the court. So we can assume, oh, Kobe's just not there because she doesn't want to be there. Or maybe somebody told Kobe not to be there. And, you know, everybody True. doesn't talk mm-hmm. about that. Everybody doesn't say what's being told to the next person. It's a lot of assumptions going on. So I won't say mm-hmm. that of he's course. not showing up because he doesn't want to be there. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like when he has been at games, he's been showing great support to his teammates and telling them what they're doing wrong. Or I've seen him like, hey, man, you need to come up right. on the back and come around the side. So you never know what somebody's telling him. Gotcha. Okay. That is very, very do you want, You Are you asking all of us or are you just? Um, well, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I don't especially know. wanted I I mean, would would like to. Stop it. Yeah, I especially would like to. I mean, I don't want to. No, you that's know, fine. Cut into we, it, can, we can stick with this because um, just kind of jumping on what you said about Kobe, I can see that I've been a fan of his since. I was a little girl. I can see that he's transitioning in more of a mentor now. Mm -hmm. Before he saw him, he considered himself as the Kobe. Nobody can touch me. Mm -hmm. My teammates, I play me one on one now. But now I can see him like getting hyped on the sidelines, um, taking D'Angelo Russell under his wings, like cheering him on. I mean, I just see him him changing into that role, and I respect that a lot more um, for Kobe. I mean, as a Laker fan. I mean, I, to your point, Carmelita, like, people talk about, you know, how Kobe is, like, an absentee teammate sometimes. And we, like you said, we don't know what he does on the back end. But I think about Carson Palmer when he was hurt and other quarterbacks and faces of franchises when they're hurt. You still see them with the clipboard. You still see Andy Dalton with the clipboard. You still see Blake Griffin, you know, on the sidelines. And I think that Kobe's reputation has preceded him as I am Kobe. I'm an individual. I'm going to take care of me first. And I feel like if there hadn't been so many incidents over the past, Pat, the over his entire career that made us believe he was so individu- individualistic versus more of a team player, then I think he would get a lot less grief. But I think he's proven to be a little bit selfish. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying you have people like Carson Palmer who are going to stick it out no matter what. And you got people like Kobe who are going to get on his helicopter and be like, peace out, I'm not playing. I got a, a sore shoulder. So I I think Kobe is a little bit absent What do you think, Josh? Well, you know what? I think Kobe's uh, legacy will stand. The good part of his legacy will stand the time, the test of time going forward. But I think going forward for the Lakers, though, uh, I, I tend to believe that you do need a – a main superstar player, uh, especially when it comes to the Lakers, and I'll say because that's part of the Lakers' legacy, and that's part of the the um, I wouldn't want to say the mystique of the Lakers. But that's their thing to draw people to Hollywood, uh, because the, the basketball team plays into the Hollywood lifestyle, mm-hmm. and I think we need a central superstar on the team, and then build around that person. Now, who that person is going for, I don't know. The guy I mean, from LSU? The I Simmons. Ben guy. Simmons coming from LSU? I would love but to get him in the draft. But then would he be a star I don't, player? Right. right. I, so I it's kind of like, who, who can be a star player on the Lakers? Yeah. Like, you just can't go and pull anybody and say, you're a the star, star player, player for yeah. the Lakers. It Absolutely has to be not. someone with the resume of a James Harden, of mm-hmm. a Curry, I think, uh, of a... think Westbrook will, will yeah, be a good a addition. Of a Westbrook. It has to be somebody, it has to be someone with a, with a full resume. Exactly. Yeah. You just can't pull a, a rookie up and say, oh, you are going to be the face of the Lakers. That's not going to work. It's now, then again, it, you, you, we, time will tell. I mean, it definitely can happen. I mean, it happened with LeBron James. They gave him the whole, you know, franchise True. right off the bat. So and if there was a player, yeah. LeBron James, that could, but we can't that yeah. you, you can't. I'm you can't I'm saying, to no, him. no, no, no. But I'm saying it could definitely happen. We don't know yet. We don't know who's coming up in the there ranks could that could guy. be a, a superstar. But I think Ben Simmons would be a great addition to the team if we can get him in the draft. I think he would definitely come in and make an impact. And if he could I, develop over than, some years, that would be good too. Because I think yeah. a lot of like the romanticized like ideal of Kobe is that he's always only been a Laker. Like Westbrook could come and make a huge difference, but he's been at OKC for so many years and Harden we know went from OKC to the Rockets and then if he came here I feel like he want a player to come and try to emulate as closely as possible Kobe's career and that is being a Laker die hard through and through and never having slept well, with any other team. I'm just gonna say I miss Phil Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. Mm, we all do. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. What, what, what about uh 
Let's go. Let's talk about the Clippers now. So, yeah. so, okay. Okay. I love the Clippers. The Clippers. Okay. Yeah. So there's some rumors going around between a trade um, between uh, Memphis and the Clippers. So they're thinking about trading Tony Allen for C.J. Wilcox and Doc Rivers' son Austin Rivers. So what's your take? I want to get everyone's take on that trade. And also, there has been some talk on Lance Stevenson. He hasn't really been producing. Um, I know before the season started, there was a lot of hype about the Clippers signing him, and you know he was going to be an immediate impact. Haven't really seen much. Um, so what do you guys think about those two topics? It's awesome. Let's start with um, Doc Rivers and trading his son. I, I think <laughs> that has you, to be hard. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Hey, I, I'm not a big Austin Rivers fan, but that, that's just my take. But if you bring anybody from Memphis, I say you bring Matt Barnes back so he can take care of his uh, his sons before Derek Fisher steps in. Oh, and, oh, and oh, and become that's that's that. That's real talk, man. That's that's real that. talk, man. You know what? Talk. I like Allen. Like he said, all defense, yeah. all mm -hmm. defense. True. You know, the, the, the guy can play. Mm -hmm. And he can D up anybody. And wasn't it Kobe that said he was the person that he hated to to defend him? Was that was it was Tony Allen? Yeah, Tony Allen. Allen. He could have been. A yes, pretty he, good can, defensive game he, against Kobe. he can defend. So do I think that would be a good look for the Clippers to possibly have someone that plays real hard defense from top to bottom? I do think that would be a good look. What do you think, Erica? A Clipper fan? That was supposed to be Lance Stevenson. I mean, it was supposed to be right. Lance. And I go up and down on Austin Rivers. Uh, Austin Rivers, when he started, when he had his little coming out party in the round one against the Spurs, it was an Austin Rivers we had never seen before. And then he kind of has his lulls. And then last night he was 7 for 10, 16 points off the bench. So, like, he keeps giving us ups and downs. And right now the Clippers are on fire, as is Austin Rivers. So I'm just like, you can't break up that chemistry right now. I guess you got to think long term. What do you want long term? You want the D from Tony Allen and his scoring and his, his experience over Austin Rivers' immaturity? Or do you want to break up the chemistry of a team, of a coach who's going to lose his son? Well, this is what I'll say about that, which you just said. I'll piggyback on it. You said that they've been playing really well for the past six games. Mm -hmm. They've won the past six, six games. And, of course, Blake has not been playing because mm -hmm. Blake has been injured. So what that lets me know that the athletes are stepping up because they have no choice. You know, and sometimes it's because they actually get some playing time. Preach. So if you're giving me three and five minutes, I'm going to do like my mama said. You better shoot the ball every time you get in there. <laughs> right. You know, so if you're actually getting – a real run, then you're able to be comfortable. You're able to show, okay, I can play. Let me do what I've been doing all these years. I've been in the league this long for a reason. You know, Paul Pierce, he just had 17 points the other night. Right. But if you're only playing Paul Pierce for five minutes or seven minutes of a game, you can't expect him to ball out the way he needs to ball out. You're putting him in and then you're taking him out. You know, this is a veteran. This is a guy that can play on any team that has, that has basketball IQ. Let's, let's put that out there, because a lot of people don't have basketball oh, IQ. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a man that has basketball IQ, but when you don't play him, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at stats and you're looking at numbers, okay, this, this person only had four points, but he only played two minutes. Mm -hmm. right? You know, And so now, like you said, everybody's balling. Mm -hmm. Six games, they're winning. Mm -hmm. They have no choice but to have chemistry. Why? Because more people have to play now. You know, yeah. More people have to step up. Honestly, I think that... Um, you can't you can't judge that team on where they are right now because Blake Griffin is a huge part of that he team. Is. He so is. you even if they're playing great and they've won six games and these guys are stepping up and doing what they need to do, it really doesn't matter because at the end of the day, when Blake Griffin comes back, they have to know their role and they have to play their position and play their part on that team, and that's what's going to make it go. But I think as the coach. From his perspective, he's like, he can see that. Mm -hmm. He's like, was Blake Griffin here or not? I know I need to make this trade with these cats because I done seen how they played when he was here. Mm -hmm. I seen how they played when he when he wasn't here, and it's not what we need. And I think as a coach, it's very difficult to trade your son away. Mm. But I think also what it shows is that he's about the game. He's about winning basketball games. He's about winning a championship and trying to get past and out of that second round. It's so they got to do what exactly it's business. business. So you got to do Mom, what dad, you got to do. Brother, it's all and you can't yeah. judge that team. Tony mm -hmm. Allen, you can't judge that team without Blake Griffin. They may have won six straight, but when Blake Griffin comes back, if they don't win six straight, it's a problem. Well, mm -hmm. I like Tony Period. Allen, too. I like okay. Tony I like Allen. Allen. But Stevenson, he's averaging four, he's averaging four yeah. points a game. Yeah. He's, I'm, like, I'm and, go two and two rebounds. And two rebounds. Yeah, yeah. But, it's it's not but, a, but for Stevenson, it's, it's about defense. It's not really about 
point production. Yeah, but that's it. Defense. It, it, it is about defense, but that's his role. Tony, they're giving Tony Allen that role of the defensive guy. Yeah. So you got to step up in another form or fashion. Yes, you got to still play defense because defense wins championships, but you got to know your role to be consistent with it no matter who's playing or who's not. On you just got to make it out of the second round. That's all I can tell <laughs> you. They got to do that, though. They got to do that, Yes, though. we do. Well, you know, you, you just also have to have help for, for Chris Paul. Right. True. Chris Paul has to have help. He has to be able to sit down and somebody duplicate or do better than what he's done. Mm -hmm. And and at the end of the day, he can't be the only Can point he? guard yep. trying to make the team go to the second or third round. Yeah. That's, that, and then he's heartbroken. You know, I know Chris. I know his wife. I know mm -hmm. his children. So it's just he, he needs help. Right. Period. Yep. And you have Chris Paul as your point guard, the most important position when you play basketball. He, he can score when he needs to. And his assists, he look, he sees the floor really well. Mm -hmm. As your Lance Stevens, I'm I'm very disappointed in him. Yeah. Yes, he's a defensive a factor. Are. I get that, but I I think that effort is everything. And I think the NBA players, I don't know. This is just my opinion. They get too caught up in in their ego. Oh, I'm in the NBA. I, I should score 35 points, but we might not need you to score points. We mm -hmm. might need you to stop somebody. We might need you to to get Blake the ball, we might, might need you to lock down LeBron. I mean, I don't know, you have different roles, every game is different, and I think that that's just the issue with the, the Clippers, it's just the egos, and then just It's trying all to about out. role play, like you yeah. said, yeah. like when LeBron went to Miami, Wade yeah. stepped oh, back. Yeah, he, exactly. he took a big step back from being the man to let me play my position, let me play my role. Like you said, it's all about maturity. Right. Mm -hmm. It's all about who wants to win championships, and sometimes you gotta step back and play a certain position, even when that wasn't what you used to do. Exactly. Carmelita, do you watch any college football at all? Yes, I do. Who's oh. your team? Who are your teams? Oh, gosh. You know, my family's from Michigan, Detroit. Okay. Okay. So I'm always going to root for any Michigan team. Michigan State, Michigan Wolverines. Oh, that's great. Because we, 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 can talk, <laughs> we can talk about okay. Michigan <laughs> State. <laughs> can I get in your grill? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm trying to figure out what in the hell happened in this game <laughs> against... I don't know. Alabama. Can you speak on it? You, just yes. don't, you don't even I, want to speak on it. I, I, I lost a dollar. I just, you I you bet a dollar. Yeah. You okay. bet a dollar. I do dollar bets. I okay. Do dollar That's all okay. I like that. Just for fun. Just like yeah, yeah. to, to, you know, Jones and talk mess and, yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened. It, that, was, that, was, that was tough right yep. there. That was hard to watch. Now, do you, oh, go ahead. No, I'm just going off of your question. Like, I mean, <laughs> do you think that they should? Do, do you think that they deserve to be there? You know, considering yeah, their record and th where they were as a is, team. This is what I'll say: that you know, sometimes you do deserve to be in certain places, but sometimes you just don't perform the way you should have. Okay. Right. You know, that's what I'll say because there's been plenty of teams that deserve to be somewhere and got to the show and the lights came on and you're like, what happened? What and happened? then there's teams that had no reason, reason being there and then the lights came on and they balled out. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really just based on the team of what they're going to do when the lights flick on. Right. Absolutely. Now, what's your prediction for the national championship game? Bama we we going to make a bet. A you know bet. what? All my bets my all mentor around. coached at Clemson. He actually called me from the Clemson game, just, yeah, ah! <laughs> and I was like, okay, and um, I'm, I'm going to have to say, Clemson's been handling their business all year. What they need to do right now is keep doing exactly <laughs> what they've been doing. Sometimes people get to the big show and they try to change stuff to this match the other mm -hmm. team. And true. when you're trying to change stuff to match the other team, you always end up messing up because yeah. you're not playing your game anymore. So I need them to go agree. out there now, I agree. and play like Clemson. I agree to an extent. Uh -huh. But I also will tell you that the teams that they play in their conference, they haven't, I'm going to be real with you, they haven't seen anything like Bama. Mm -hmm. That's a team that you almost have to to switch your game plan because they got the, the, the top defense in the country every single year. Mm -hmm. They got some of the top. All these cats are going to the NFL. Almost all them cats, the first, second string cats, they're yeah. all going to the NFL. So I agree to an extent that mm -hmm. you kind of got to stick with what got you yeah. there. But at the same time, though, 
I don't even think they got an answer for Bama. I think if Alabama does them and does what they need to do and Clemson does them and does what they need to do. It's going to be a good game. I think it'll be a good game, too. I don't too. think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be a good game. I, I, I think Bama wins by 21 points. See, oh, I don't think so. I, I got Bama 28, Clemson 20. I think, I think. I mean, of course, I'm an SEC girl. I went to Georgia, so I'm an okay. SEC homer. But Deshaun Watson is from Georgia, the state, mm -hmm. from Gainesville, Georgia. Um, and my heart is is torn, too, because I do want Deshaun to do well. He didn't win the Heisman. He finished, you know, second runner-up, third place. Um, this would be great, a great achievement for him and for Dabo Sweeney. And I would hate for them to go undefeated all season and then lose to Bama. However, Bama does have, you know, Coker, who's all of a sudden turned into a quarterback who can pass. <laughs> that, right. I don't know where that came from. And then Derrick Henry, the, 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 the Heisman, the Heisman winner. winner running back. You got Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin, um, Kirby Smart, my new coach. Just a, three coaching geniuses on both sides of the ball and the head coach, of course. Running back, quarterback. I think it's gonna. I think Clemson is gonna really meet their match. And sorry to your mentor, but I think Clemson's gonna lose twenty eight. And, that, to zero, and Alabama 20. is a team that no matter who they play, they can just be Alabama. Because they have all the star power, they have all the the, the, the backups are, are even strong. Mm -hmm. You know, it's certain teams that don't have that depth to a point when the first the guy goes down, the second and third guy is almost no drop off. So to piggyback off of what you did say, I believe that if you are strong enough, you can be consistent and keep doing the same thing until somebody stops it. They've been winning championships for years at Alabama mm -hmm. with Nick Saban. Raina and Josh, who you, who do you guys have? Well, I'm going to go with my fellow knight over here. I'm going with Clemson. <laughs> I know they are undefeated. Mm -hmm. I get that. And I know that their schedule wasn't very, they haven't really been challenged in a way. But I'm expecting a huge game from Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. I think that he, the Heisman um, winner, uh, Derrick Henry, I think that's kind of like going to pump him up, a pump Deshaun Watson up a little more. Mm -hmm. Like, Man, I should have had that. I should have had that award. You know, mm -hmm. I, I feel like he is going to come out stronger and try to prove everybody because like this is his chance. Gave it to he should have gave it to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But I'm is that a, bad have... sometimes when you try to come out and do too much no, instead of just playing? No, I don't playing? think so. No? I think it's more of like a motivation mm -hmm. factor. Like if I'm playing against somebody who won MVP or who had like all tournament, whatever, it's like I'm going to take you out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to outshine you. So I think that he's mature enough to handle that. Um, I think. Uh, it's going to be a tough game, mm -hmm. but I'm going to go with Clemson. Okay. Josh, Ooh. who do you have? What it do, Josh? I think uh, Clemson, at their best, can not beat Alabama okay. yes, sir. at their best. Aww. Yes, sir. We're Especially alone. with yes, sir. the defensive force that Alabama is. Yes, sir. I think Alabama will take it. So like we shall see. We okay. shall see. We I'm shall predicting see. the score right now, 31 to 10. Oh, oh no. I say 28 to 20. Nah. Um, Josh. Okay, well, we got a dollar on it. <laughs> we do have a dollar. Miss Dollar Josh. all the way around. I'm about that life. <laughs> Josh has an interesting story um, from a sport we don't normally talk about, a sport Funny. we don't ever talk about under, cricket. Under, under to Australia. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this earlier this week, um, Australia, well, West Indian cricket player who uh, plays in Australia, Chris Gale, uh, had an interview with uh, Mel McLaughlin uh, after a cricket match. And during this interview, he, uh, he took to uh, McLaughlin's uh, pretty face <laughs> and uh, ended up kind of flirting with it. Do we have the video on that? Can we get the first 20 Incredibly seconds of that? aggressive approach for you two. It looks like you're absolutely just smashing this innings. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I want to come and have an interview with you as well. That's the reason why I'm here. So just to see your eyes for the first time. It's nice. So hopefully we win this game and we can have a drink after. Don't blush, baby. I'm not, I'm not blushing. <laughs> um, All right. Did you... Any injuries? Run that back. <laughs> or not. Uh, <laughs> no. So he said he wanted to come over and interview with her. She has nice eyes. Maybe we can get a drink later. So, Don't blush, baby. Eyes, so if you see her nice, reaction, so she kind of was a little, you know, Don't put off baby. by that. Mm -hmm. And so there was an uproar afterwards. A whole lot of people were saying that was very unprofessional of him. He shouldn't have done that. And a lot of people were saying, hey, it was the harmless flirting. So in this segment of news, you can learn from. Mm -hmm. I want to see what you guys think about what we can learn from Chris Gale and what he did during that interview. Carmelita, it's all you. That's all you. Let's start it off. Um, you know, I think everybody has a different um, humor to their personality. And, um, you know, maybe that was his personality. You know, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. You know, sometimes people can come across in a way that they really didn't mean harm to it, I mm -hmm. guess, but the way it comes out, you know, like sometimes when you have a conversation with someone, 
it came out bad and you're like, but then they're like, no, I didn't mean it like that, you know? So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I initially didn't think anything of it, but then I read some reports that he has a bad reputation for being a womanizer. So if that is, in fact, his reputation, he should have kept that to himself. And I think the athletes have to be really particular, especially men, especially black men, have to be really particular <laughs> about, you know, how they come across and how they advance themselves on reporters because it's supposed to be a professional environment. So I think what we can learn from this is that if you already have a bad reputation for being a man whore, keep that kind of stuff <laughs> in, in the DMs. Slap in the DMs. In the DMs. Down in the DMs. Is it my turn? Are we going female right, first? Man, good to come go. to me last. No, oh, I'm going to go last. I'm going to go last. Oh, go, well, Dre. Yeah, yeah. rip it. Hey, man, my boy trying to get in where he fit in. Oh, you my know what I mean? I ain't bad at you. Now, you got to work, uh, work on your pickup lines and all that kind of stuff. You need to go back to the drawing board, see yourself in the mirror, and work on that. But there ain't nothing wrong with that, brother. Man, ain't nobody watching them games anyway, and I ain't even trying to be rude. <laughs> you ain't nobody watching them games. You know how popular no, cricket just, is? Hey, man. <laughs> Keep doing your thing, brother. Oh, Just God. get you some better pickup lines so she don't make you look bad. You want her to say yes. Oh, if she would have oh, said yes, we gosh. wouldn't even be talking about this if she'd have said yes. Rady, what do you think? No, I think it was so unprofessional and it was creepy. Like, he was like, don't, don't blush, baby. Like, that sounded so weird. And if you continue to, like, to listen to that interview at the end, he was just like, I like to look at them eyes more at the end. So oh, okay. if he, so he started off, it. yeah, it was more to it. Like, no, I don't think you should do that. I mean, try it. Try it. Shoot your shot. 2016. I get it. But I think that should probably happen after the interview. Mm. But I think it was so unprofessional. As a reporter, I probably would feel uncomfortable. I probably would have laughed. But yeah. uh, that's just not what you do. And I, I agree he should have been. I'm fine. It's a new year. Look, no. what is it? Don't shoot your shot in 2016, <laughs> especially on air. What Sorry. is it with <laughs> ladies these days? Not all of them. What is it with ladies these days being so against men who find them attractive? I don't well, understand. What is the point? Yeah. If you are attractive, I think what's wrong with expecting somebody to say, hey, you're yeah. attractive, and acknowledging that beauty. I think if you're going to be a professional female reporter in the arena with a, in a, in a testosterone field male sport, you're going to have to expect something like that and roll with the punches. Because Period. she could have just come back and shut him down with a, with a comeback and said, well, if your cricket bat was long enough, maybe we could do something. Oh, you know? But hey. Word up. If, yeah, if I don't you're know pretty, about that response, right? If, yes. <laughs> or, 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 I mean, or, no, or, or say, or yeah, say your like back that probably either, isn't long I, enough I, to, to, I, to roll with me. So you know, know next person. That. But you know, come back and in the heat of the moment, just come back with, a, with shut him down, right? On, right there. If, if he's gonna bring it like that to you, then you bring it right back to him and say, no, it ain't happening. If but she I'm thought saying, he if, was if you're, attractive, it'd have been different, huh? If if it's other way around, would have been different. If it was a man talking about a woman and how he looked, we wouldn't have been talking about this right now. If what now? If what now? If it was other way around, if it was a man a comment. On, yeah. If it was a woman commenting a on a man's physique or his appearance, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. It's the double standard. That's how it is, right? It's, it's definitely a double standard, but again, the segment is what can we learn? And I learned that he needs to learn how to slap to people's DMs and not make a fool of himself <laughs> right. on international platforms. He, he was fined the equivalent of about 7100 US dollars, and it went to charity. But I feel like what, what we can learn from this segment personally is that I think that, hey, as a female reporter, you might have to expect that, and that's just the nature of the sport. I learned that I it's wouldn't say that. sweet. Yeah. If a male reporter is talking and I think he's attractive, is it? You know, I just, I just don't think you should, uh, should, should say, should flip it like that because it could happen either way. It could, you know. Well, I mean, if it happened the other way, it wouldn't be a news story, you know, right? We wouldn't, right? Wouldn't, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be talking about it if, it, if it happened the other direction. But I don't think it would fly. happen the other way. But but why would either. you say that it wouldn't happen? Because women are much more intelligent than do some stupid stuff like that. Oh, now see. Look, no. I learned. <laughs> I learned that it's 2016, sweet 16 this year. You got to get in where you fit in. Go for it all. Go for it all. Leave it all out there on do the line. Off air. Get everything that that, that, that that God got for you. And it might have been her. <laughs> it might have been her. They might be kicking it right now. Oh. <laughs> we, hey, there we go. We don't know. They could be. I doubt it, though. Real quick, guys. Um, Stuart Scott's one-year anniversary of his death was this week, and his girls, Taylor and Sydney, released a really beautiful tribute um, to their father where they talked about all the things that he taught them and how he was so influential in their lives. And I don't know if you guys out there got a chance to see the videos. Carmelita, Carmelita did you see the video? The tribute to no, Stuart Scott? It was so sweet. It was so sweet. Josh, you yeah, want to talk about that Yeah, it was a nice, a touching video tribute about uh, what their father meant to them. 
Um, one of them remarked that she was reading his uh, biography and then just not wanting to finish it because he felt like it was the last thing that he had to say to her and she wanted to take her time and read it. And it was it was really nice touching tribute to her father and what he meant to them and what he meant to the sports world and to those people who you know are affected by the the horrible disease that cancer is. So yeah. what I feel we could learn from that, and I think I can speak for all of us, is that is that you know each day at a time cherish the ones you're with mm -hmm. and make sure you say you know I love, I love you, you. Oh, yeah. to those people right. that you spend time with every day, those people that you care sure. about. Because I, I'm sure, uh, Carmelita, that you your life has been touched as well mm -hmm. by by cancer and you you stand up for that cause and so. Hey, life is short. It and is. Yeah. It's short. And, it's short. And yeah. I want to ask you, too, take it for granted. about, because your aunt, right, had breast cancer, yes. was diagnosed mm -hmm. with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And what is something that you, as a black woman who has, you know, women or who has had a, a, a family member with cancer, what can you tell black women about breast cancer that we don't typically know? One thing I would definitely say is it has no age. Mm -hmm. I feel like some African-American women feel like, oh, I'm only 30. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. 25. I'm not even 50. What I need to get a mammogram for, you know? And I and I feel like that's the number one thing that a lot of African American women say is I'm not old enough. Mm -hmm. I'm not old enough. Yeah. And I've met 18 year olds. I've met 21 year olds. I met 25 year olds. It 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 has no age. When I was 31. I went and got a mammogram because I didn't want to sit around and talk to people about something that I didn't do myself. Right. Like, how am I telling you to go get something that I didn't do? And the um, the the um, the doctor I go to, they made a big deal out of it because you had to be a certain age mm -hmm. to get one. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was crazy. And w my doctor just pushed me straight through. But at the other, you know, section, they were like, oh, she's not old enough. And I really feel like it starts there because if they're saying that you're not old enough at 30 and 31, then as a woman, you think, oh, I'm not old enough. Right. But they get cases all the time of women that are under 30. So why not do it on someone that's yeah. 30 or 31? Right. So my number one thing would be that it doesn't matter how old you are. Stop thinking that you're not old enough to get breast cancer. Really important. Oh yeah, um, I have a couple family members that have passed away um, with cancer. Um, and my aunt right now is, was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer as well. So um, I'm gonna jump on uh, Josh's statement. It's just live your life. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you tell your loved ones you love them and um, try not to end a ni every night, like don't go to sleep upset. Mm. That's what I'm trying to work on myself. Like if something ruins my day, I just try not to let it bother me for more than like an hour. Like a Laker loss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I agree with you that. Yeah. I try not to go to bed upset, and if yeah. something is really bothering me, I, I will address it to the person that I'm upset with. I do that a lot more now. And then if they can take it or they don't have to take it, but I'm going to give it to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So whatever right. you do with it after I give it to it's you, your like, it's, it's your business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Before we wrap, um, Carmelita, will you leave us with any more tidbits about your road to Rio that you want to share that we haven't talked about? Um, like see. training, eating regimen, travel schedule, your wardrobe is super fly, of course. Thank you. Well, you know, I'm sponsored by Nike, yes. so I have tons, we're, we're tons to Nike. Of, of Nike clothes. Um, what I did do, I guess I'll talk about my bracelet. Um, I did a collaboration with My Intent, and I did a collaboration with Pentrail. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but My Intent, um, they you put words on your bracelet, and I did it for breast cancer, and all the proceeds went to Chemo Buddies. And what mind over body is, is, you know, mentally, you know, we don't, you know, our physically our body is just, you know, tired. You've been going through chemotherapy. You have chemo brain. You're just mm -hmm. exhausted. And I, I did the bracelet to say, like, your mind is the most powerful thing that you have over your body. Mm -hmm. You know, your mind will push you to do things that you would have never thought your body could do. In 2013, I tore my right quad and I got a bronze medal on one leg. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't mm -hmm. know that. I limped mm -hmm. from 70 meters to 100 meters, but my mind is so vicious. You know, mm -hmm. when I crossed the finish line, this was just all tore mm -hmm. up, but I, you wouldn't have known that the way I was running. So I made the bracelet for mind over body so you could push yourself more. Um, just training for 2016 Rio, um, that's, the, that's the big, you know, check off the, on my bucket list right yeah. now is one more Olympics, you know, just, just getting to the show one more time. 
I didn't realize how important the Olympics was until 2012. Mm. You know, you, um, you're out there and you have on these colors and people are screaming for you that never even met you. People are crying for you that never yeah. even met you. That's and you're awesome. just like, you're crying for me? You're <laughs> show me, you know? But it just gives you a whole different perspective to what you've done in life. And I just want to feel that again. I want to go back and feel that again. So right now it's just grind, grind, and more grind. Well, we can't wait to see it for I know. sure. Yes. We, Good we know luck. You don't go out We're there. excited thank for you. you. Thank will you come back and visit us back. before you I will. Go? I will. I'll do anything for Miss Raina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're going to hold you to that. And if you lose your bet next Monday night, we will we'll be contacting you for our dog. <laughs> <laughs> come and but find trust and dog. believe, I will call okay. and say, uh, rub me my buddy. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to send you number, too. Hey, get that dollar. Carmelia, tell everyone out there where they can find you on social media. And your website, too. Okay, great. You can find me at JetG5 for my Instagram. Twitter is Carmelita Jetter. And for my website, it's CarmelitaJetter.com. So I'd love to hear from you. Go on and add me, like a couple pics. Follow me. Follow Jet to Rio. And um, tag me on some of your pics that uh, you running or training or doing anything positive. I'd love to see you. And the intent bracelets, where can they find and design those? My intent, you can go to myintent.com and you can pick up the Jet Carmelita Jetter bracelet, which is mind over body. You can also go to pentrail.com and get the Carmelita Jetter jet which is a pink jet and it says jet on the side so all proceeds go to chemo buddies and sisters network i don't receive anything so just letting you know it's going to help a great cause awesome and um i am erica renee davis you can find me on snapchat periscope twitter and instagram at erica renee d i'm andre dean you can find me on instagram and twitter at andre the giant a-u-n-d-r-e-t-h-a-g-i-a-n-t and I'm Raina Ale. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope at Raina underscore Ale. And I'm Joshua Johnson. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at JJ the Talented. And follow all things Black Hollywood Live on BlackHollywoodLive.com. Follow us on Instagram at The Branded Athlete. And make sure you stay on Twitter at BHL Online until next Thursday night at 7. Guys, thank you for watching The Branded Athlete on Black Hollywood Live. And thank you to the beautiful, fast Carmelita Jenner. Gracias. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Christian, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host owner and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.